Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to turn this Zeus Gorgon doll into Kyle Heisenberg from Resident Evil Village. If you look at his concept art, you might notice that there are a lot of clothes and accessories to make, that's why it took me so much time to finish this project. But I will definitely add bookmarks into the description box, so if you need the tutorial on a particular piece, you can easily find it. This time I would like to start with the face up, so the first things to do would be removing his green cap or scales with a knife and the factory makeup with pure acetone. At first I tried to repaint his head how it is, but it came out quite dirty, so I took another head and did a little plastic surgery to him. I removed some material from his jaw and cheekbones in order to make the shape of his face longer, closer to an oval. Along the way I had to cut off his ears, but now when the face has the right shape, I glue them back with super glue and sand the edges to get rid of the seams. Now the head is ready for the face up. I sprayed it with MSC and now I can start layering the paint. I kept the bad face up in order to keep my mistakes right in front of me and not repeat them again. Like for example the eyes were too large and too far from each other and I almost drew it like this again. The big challenge was turning a teenage doll into a firm middle-aged man with just some makeup. Before I started I had a feeling that this might be the case and I thought, ok, I will first try to draw the face and only if I get it right I will continue working on this project. So basically I was prepared to fail from the get-go, but since you can see this video on YouTube, it came out not that bad.
When the face is done, I would like to add a real fancy beard to it, which won't just look good, but also fix the shape of the face, because I think he has not enough chin. Okay, now I wonder, what if guys with beards have no chins? For the beard I use saran hair, which was generously provided by an old Frankie doll. I glue the hair vertically to his face on super glue. In this case, super glue can't be replaced because you need a quick and strong grab. And to make the beard look even more realistic, I cut it with a gradient. And at the cheeks, neck and around his mouth, I will glue just some flock. I make flock out of the same hair from Frankie by cutting it into dust. For gluing the flock, I use all-purpose glue. Look at this dude, so handsome! For the hair I made yarn vests again. I tried to mix black yarn with grey and white in different proportions to have more options to choose from. I ended up using just wefts with 25% grey or white hair and pure black ones and glued them one after another. First black and grey, then just black, then black and white, again black, etc.
With such a full hair, he reminds me of Scar from The Lion King. At the next day, when the glue is dry, I can cut his hair. Done with the head, let's make his outfit. The first things to make are the pants. Unfortunately, I didn't have dark brown fabric, that's why I had to remember some ancient alchemy secrets and color it with black tea. I put roughly 2 teaspoons of salt into a pot, add some water and cook it for 10 minutes. For this purpose, it's better to use tea bags because it's cheap and you don't need to filter any tea leaves. It's important to make the fabric wet before you put it into the tea and the tea is supposed to be still hot at this point. If you follow these rules, the fabric will be colored evenly and the color will be deeper. I use two kinds of fabric, one is pure cotton and another one is mixed with 40% polyester. I put them both into the pot with tea, make sure that everything is covered with tea and leave it like this for half an hour. For the next step I need two pots with clean water. I put two teaspoons of vinegar into the small one, which will help us to fix the color. Then I wash my fabrics in the clean water and put them into vinegar water for 5 or 10 minutes. The fabrics are brown enough now, I let them dry, iron them and start working on the pants. This time I just copied the pattern from the pants that were on the doll originally. Why not? Usually when I work on real human clothes, I would iron each seam and each fold. But if you are lazy, just like me, and work with a stable cotton fabric, you can just drop the piece against the table like this. Also works. Here I will fix some velcro and the pants are done. Now let's make the short. I make the pattern using my usual technique with film and paper tape.
I built the pattern for the collar based on the measurements from the neck. Usually a regular short collar would consist out of two parts, but I thought that making details which are smaller than seam allowances is not a good idea, so I made the one piece collar instead. When I attached the collar, I noticed that the neck hole is a bit too wide, so I add some corrections to the pattern and start the whole short again. This time I would like to make the collar tighter and ignore the darts. Instead, I will just gather fabric on this place. And if you are changing the neckline on the main pattern, don't forget to adjust the collar as well. See, now it fits perfectly and I can feel free to finish the shirt. At first I left sleeves open so I can adjust the length after putting the short and the trench coat on, because in male clothing a short has to look out of a jacket sleeve. After finishing the sleeves I've added velcro and buttons. The trench coat. As a basic pattern I'm going to use my very first short pattern with a loose collar, but I will make it a little bit more loose at the sides, so we can fit a short underneath. And then build other details according to the model. For example, Heisenberg's trench coat has an interesting type of a sleeve that extends in one piece fully to the collar. It was named Reglan after a lord who lost his right arm in the Battle of Waterloo. But the guy didn't give up, he taught himself how to fight with the left arm and together with his tailor developed a new type of sleeve which gave him more room for movement to swing his sword and also made it easier for Lord Jaglan to dress. Before I start to work on smaller details, I build the main details together and check if the coat fits how I want it to. 
Seems fine to me. Let's undo everything and sew it properly with a machine. Now the change code is done. I've added some fake pockets off camera as well, so it looks even more detailed. Now we are coming to accessories. To make the pattern for the head I need to measure his head circumference first. Better to do it when the hair is done, otherwise the head might come out a bit tight, just as it happened in my case. It still worked though.
When you work with laser-like materials, remember that you are not allowed to use pins, because they will leave holes. It's better to underline the pattern on fabric, and if you need to fix parts while sewing, you can use pins just at the seam allowances, as I will show soon. I made the brim of the head out of two details in order to make it keep its form and look nice from both sides. The bottom piece I cut out without seam allowance, just because it will be too hard to see three layers of leather and since I glued it to the upper part, it doesn't really need to be fixed with a seam, if it makes sense to you. For the boots, I'm going to modify a pair of shoes I took from Claude Wolf, which look pretty close to Heisenberg shoes. First I remove the shoelaces, then I remove fat from the surface with a nail polish remover, prime them with MSC and paint them with black acrylics. The belts I'm going to make out of little jewelry rings and leather stripes.
It looks like nothing special, but I am so proud of this idea. For the glasses I first drew a blueprint on paper and then made a frame out of wire. The lenses I just took from another doll's glasses and cut them in form. I covered the sharp ends of the wire with black epoxy sculpt, so now it's safe for the doll and also looks more detailed. The rest of the wire I just painted with acrylics and then attached the lenses with super glue. For the back I made one strap out of a ribbon, which I painted with textile markers and other belts out of artificial leather. I made the metal part the same way as on the shoes, so I'm just showing the result. The last part to make will be his gigantic hammer. At first I sketch it to get a feeling for the proportions and then start sculpting. For the base I have chosen steel clay because it's lighter, but the outer layer and small details will be made out of epoxy sculpt.
That was quite some sculpting there. Now let's paint it. I used silver grey epoxy sculpt in hopes to save some time on painting. Well, at least if I left something unpainted it won't be so noticeable.
Now let's dress our dude and add some dirt to his clothes. That was quite a journey, thanks everyone who stayed with me till the end. If you liked this video give it a thumbs up and if you have questions go ahead and ask me in the comments. See you in the next video, bye!